<laughs> yes, Tori, that is correct. I am cooking this for the, the same thing for the third time in a row. How awesome is that? Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to another Cook Along Live. My name is Robert. I am your host tonight, as you all know, because you're all my friends. I consider everybody my friend. Even if you're not my friend on Facebook, you're still my friend. You can see my cat in the background right there deciding to clean herself and join us for this lovely stream. We're making chicken cacciatore tonight. I hope you guys are ready. It's going to be a good night, a lot of fun. Um, I've got a couple of new camera angles, so I'll give you a kind of quick preview. Got a little bit nicer food layout here, food spread, and hi, how are you? You can see the rest of my kitchen now, and you can tell when I'm actually washing my hands. Isn't that awesome? Pretty cool, huh? So, a lot of this is just because I have all the equipment already, I'm just kind of figuring out how to make it all work with the computer. So as I get better and better, we're going to get more and more cool stuff. The side camera over here, I actually want to turn this into a top-down camera, which will just be looking straight down on the cutting board and on the uh, pan over here. And uh, we'll see how I can finagle that. I might actually have to get an arm or something to get that camera up over me. But that's an old video camera that I've been using, I, I have had it since... I don't know. When did Nine Inch Nails start doing their Lights in the Sky tour? Then, like 2000, 2002, something like that. Long time ago. Uh, old camera, works good, does HD, can't complain. Cell phone is now over there, so if I need to go check it, I can. Um, it's no longer one of my primary cameras, and of course my vlogging camera is right there in front of me. Hello, cat. What are you doing? Go away. All right, let's get started with the chicken. Now, I, being the avant-garde type of person that I am, I uh, actually went out and got a whole chicken. And we are, of course, going to tear this guy down live for Facebook. Sound good? Anybody else know how to take down a chicken? Tear down a chicken? Break down a chicken? Whatever you want to call it. Um, it's actually not that difficult. It's actually pretty easy. And this chicken I got for about 10 bucks. So way cheaper than just getting the breasts, you get the entire chicken. The way I like to do it is I actually like to remove the breasts first. I find where the uh, breast bone is, and then I just kind of take my knife and cut straight down along the side of the breast bone, like so. And what's going to happen is you're going to actually, you're going to feel a bone right in here, and this bone is the wishbone. If you follow the wishbone with your knife, it'll take you all the way down to the bottom of the breast, and you can actually almost cut through it down to the cutting board. And then you can just kind of peel it back with your fingers. Let me turn it this way so you can see it. You can actually kind of peel it back with your fingers, and you can see that the meat almost separates right off of the cavity. And then all you're doing is using the tip of your knife just to kind of help it along and keep it, keep it separating from the uh, carcass. Be very careful here. Cut the skin down like that. Cut along, you're going to see the rib cage is right here. You're just going to cut along the rib cage with the tip of your knife. If you've already got your chicken, like, dressed down, don't worry about it. I'm just going to go through this real quick. And I'm just using the tip of my knife to cut up as close to the body of the chicken as I can go. Now, when I get up here, this is actually where the wing joint is. So I can see, I can see where the ball and socket is for the wing. And I know this is getting a little graphic, I'm sorry. But, this is just to kind of demonstrate how simple it is to save some money when you want to cook some chicken. So there we go. The breast and the entire arm is off. Wing. Wing, arm, same thing. Different animal. And then once we cut through the skin over on this side, there we go. And this thing is already kind of... Uh, unattached, so you're just going to be cutting around to get it off. There we go. Wing and breast separated. That's one side. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. We're just going to follow where the breastbone is and cut right down. I'm not going to take as much time explaining what I'm doing on this one. I'm just going to go through, and you can see how quickly you can kind of take down a chicken, tear down a chicken. Break down a chicken. There's like 15 different ways you can say what you're doing. This is also really cool because you're getting the most meat you possibly can. A lot of the time, if you just buy the breast or whatever, it's mechanically separated. And that doesn't really 
do much more than just shred the chicken apart. And you lose a lot of the smaller pieces of chicken. So you get maximum yield this way. How's everybody's week been? Have you guys had a good week? It was my birthday. I spent the day yesterday at the Contra Costa Food Bank, our local food bank here. We were very, very, um, what do you call it? Socially isolated from each other. Everybody was wearing masks. They provided us with gloves. Um, we obviously had to wash our hands anytime that we left our station and we were just sorting. We were taking uh, food that had been donated and moving it into bins. Today, I believe they were actually boxing the meals for families that need them. So there we go. Second breast has been removed. Just find kind of where the uh, wing attaches. And if you cut right in between the ball and socket, the wing comes right out. You don't have to put much effort in at all. Two pieces of chicken breast, got two wings, and taken most of the meat off of this guy. So now it's time to get the thighs out. So what I like to do is actually start up on the top here. We can see the skin here. I just like to kind of cut through. And then again, I'm just gonna kind of go and look for where the joint is, and you're just gonna cut through the joint. Joint is right in here, and I am trying to keep one hand dry and one hand touching the chicken. And just try and kind of follow. I don't know if you guys can see it on that camera, but you can see, let's see, right in there, you can see kind of where the bone is attached, and you just cut right through. I don't know if you guys could see that or not. A little hard to do monitoring on the video monitor as well as take care of the chicken at the same time. But yeah, so that's what we did. Um, today they're actually distributing the food, which is awesome. They're putting it into boxes so that families who actually need it can go in and just pick up their, pick up their food. So we got our thighs and our drumsticks, they're together, we got our breasts and we got our wings, and now we've got this lovely piece of chicken that we can use for stock. Uh, if you really wanna go in, there's a couple of really tender pieces of meat back here. They're called the oysters. I, I don't care, I'm just gonna use the whole thing for stock. Uh, I am gonna separate the drumsticks and the thighs though. You basically, again, just find kinda where the joint is, and just cut down, you'll find where the socket is and you can cut right through it. And then we got a chicken thigh, we got a chicken drumstick, same thing on here. You can also, if you want to cheat, you can find where the elbow is, where the elbow of the chicken is, and just cut right into that. That usually goes right through the joint. Cool, so we've broken down our chicken. So, next step is to wash our hands, of course. Yeah, what do you guys got going on this weekend? Anything fun? Some of you guys on the East Coast who don't generally cook along live with me, have you guys been making any of the meals that I've made or is this just entertaining for you? I'm actually curious because I'm trying to inspire people to, you know, do their own cooking, kind of get into it, have some fun, because that's all cooking is. Now if you get into baking, baking is a science. That's a totally different story. But cooking should just be like, enjoy yourself, have a good time. It's not something that you should really take seriously. I'm, well, if you want to eat, I guess it should be. But uh, you don't have to take it that seriously. You can really do whatever you want. Let's do there. Cool. So we got our chicken going. I'm going to go ahead and get my pan on medium high or high. And here's the thing. The reason that I say food is kind of fun and you should try and keep it fun, there's like... 15,000 different recipes for chicken cacciatore. All of them claim that they are the original recipe and that they are authentic. I don't really think that any of them are authentic. I think that they're all just kind of whatever anybody wants to throw into a pan, and that ends up being chicken cacciatore. So the reason that I took a chicken and broke it down from full chicken into these individual pieces is because I want all this skin and I want all this chicken fat. A lot of chicken cacciatore recipes, they ask you to use boneless, skinless breasts and then to flour them and then dust off the flour and then you're gonna be sauteing that in the pan to get some browning and color and stuff like that. Why would you do that when you have all of the flavor in the chicken skin already? And it's gonna taste like chicken, it's not gonna taste like flour, right? So, I mean, there are certain things that people do that are kinda, of, I feel like they're shortcuts. People are just, and it took me what? 
Let me check the time. It took me like less than 10, less than a minute to break down the chicken. Less than one minute, even though it took me 10. But it's fine. I like to lie. Cool. So we're getting our pan nice and warm. We're going to put in just a little bit of oil because this chicken fat is going to render out and it's going to become nice and yummy and also oily in the pan. So I just want a little bit just to kind of coat the bottom of the pan. I'm going to catch up on some chat that I've been missing because I've been totally ignoring you guys. Sorry. Yes, Buttercup was there. Cook the whole chicken first before doing all of this. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely cook the chicken if you want to first. The problem with that is now you've lost the flavor of the chicken skin in the pan. It's in the chicken. And when you deglaze the pan with wine later, all of those chicken flavors from the bottom of the pan that have been kind of cooking there release and kind of get released into the sauce that you're going to put the chicken back into. So that's why I like to just do all of this while I'm cooking the chicken, if you do chicken cacciatore. For other things like roast chicken, yes, 100%. I'll just roast the chicken and then take it apart and uh, just as easy. I actually find raw chicken to be easier to break down. And the reason that I say that is I always try and tear down a chicken or break down a chicken when I cooked it right after it comes out of the oven. So it's still like a thousand degrees and I end up burning my fingertips. So I like this better. It just works for me. Oh, man. Why are you back in the office? That's terrible. I know Georgia is kind of backwards with what they're doing with all this shelter in place stuff. And yes, you can quote me on that. Um, and I know my pen is smoking over there. That's exactly what I want. Uh, yeah, but I, I really think if you can work from home, you should work from home. Cool. So before we get our chicken in here, we're going to season it generously. I like using kosher salt. The salt granules are usually about the same size. It's a nice mild salt flavor and it really really kind of adheres to the chicken anything that you're cooking really if you're if you're sprinkling it on anything the uh granule sizes are big enough and irregular enough even though they're the same size that they stick to everything whereas if you use iodized salt it's a very very concentrated salt it's too too potent you if you put this much iodized salt on the chicken this is going to be way over salted Go ahead and put some pepper on these guys. Now the reason that I'm letting my oil burn, or not burn, but start smoking and kind of get going, is because I want these guys to sear really quickly in the pan. Just go ahead and get that going. And I'm gonna start with the biggest pieces, which are my chicken breasts, and I'm gonna lay them skin down and lay them away from you. That way if any oil splatters, it's splattering the opposite direction. And I'm going to do this guy on the other side of the pan, like so. And then I'll fit a thigh right there. Fit the other thigh right there. I'm going to let those guys go, and I will cook these guys in the next step. Let me know if this is getting too loud. I can't tell how the audio sounds to you guys. Go ahead and wash my hands real quick. I'll be right back. Always, always wash your hands when you're handling meat of any kind. Just to make sure you don't get any of the bacteria from the meat on your hands. Ooh, lime sausage. That sounds awesome. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, I know you're in Florida. Definitely a little bit late to be cooking right now for you. Unless you want a midnight snack. I mean, this would be a pretty good midnight snack. I'm just gonna let that hang out. Let it brown, it's going, it's good. You want the flavor, you want the browning, you want that all on the bottom of the pan. I still haven't taken a sip of my wine. While I'm waiting for this to um, brown, I'm gonna season the top part of the chicken here. Cause we only got the one side. And again, if I was using iodized salt to put this together, this would be way over salted. Kosher salt, you can actually see how much you're seasoning everything and you don't have to worry about like way overdoing it. <clears throat> Dad, I'm only making dinner for one. However, I'm gonna be having dinner for one for about three or four days. 
So this is actually going to be dinner, lunch tomorrow, dinner tomorrow, lunch the day after, dinner the, the day after. So this is a very economical way to cook. Uh, it's and going to end up costing me about, I think, $5 per meal. So, yeah, probably about that. While we're waiting on this, I'm going to go ahead and get started with some of our veggies. So the cool thing with chicken cacciatore is you get the chicken all brown and everything, you deglaze de de the pan, and then you just kind of get started with the sauce. And then after you get the sauce ready, you put the chicken back in. Let's check on these guys real quick before we start chopping. There we go. Nice, good color on those chicken pieces. That's exactly what you want. You want the browning, because that gives the chicken flavor. And it also leaves little bits in the pan. We're going to get those guys going. I'm going to get started with some of... I'm actually going to wash this board because it's got chicken all over it. So let me transfer some of these bits onto the tray. Bring this over to my sink. Hello. How are you all doing? Do, 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 do. Nobody's told me what you guys are doing this weekend. I know you're working three days a week from the office, Felicia. What are you doing this weekend? And Michael's going to be cooking this tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., which is awesome. A little bit early for chicken cacciatore. I guess it doesn't have to be. Let's see here. A little bit of soap. Let me just scrub down. We're good. And nobody's mentioned, I know, I know Dad and Cindy, y'all are making this every week, which is awesome. It's glad, I'm glad that you guys are cooking along with me. I think Mom and Tony have been joining as well. Uh, last week, Darlene made salmon, and she said her husband raved about it for the weekend. She's not usually the one who cooks in the family, I guess. And so the fact that she joined us and made an awesome salmon dish, she said her husband was just like over the moon about it so that's awesome that's what i like i like i like helping people kind of get out of their comfort zone have some fun one of my colleagues uh cynthia peterson actually did a cook along live over uh lunch today she made some guacamole and some really awesome other stuff and uh she th i think she had a good time it was a really good cook along if you want to go look her up on facebook you can check out her cook along live as well she did a really good job what do you guys think about the camera angles? I'm trying to make it a little bit more, I guess, intimate is the word. Make it seem like y'all are here. Make it seem like y'all are hanging out with me. And I just want you guys to know that once we are done with the shelter-in-place stuff, I'm still planning on doing these cook-along lives. So I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I think it's a lot of, uh, a lot of entertainment value for me and you. And so I don't foresee stopping doing this anytime soon. Go ahead and do that now. And we're back. Nice clean board. Chicken's going. That's awesome. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Oh, man, I'm still on DCS. I can't fix that at the moment. Sorry about that, man. Hopefully you still want to hang out and do some cooking with me. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get that set up. Oh man, cacciatore for breakfast? Sounds good. Sounds a little early for me, but eh, you know what? I'll do it. Thank you, Celia. I like my kitchen too. I've actually done some customization. Uh, all of these cabinets are from my dad's old house, and then uh, he installed some new ones there. Really, really cool stuff. I like playing around with the cameras. I really want to kind of get that down. Ooh, strawberry jam. Yes, please. I will take strawberry jam. Cool, I'm gonna check on the bottoms of these guys. I'm not super happy with the colors on top of these two pieces, so I'm actually going to spin them around and get a little bit more color on them. And good to see you, Cynthia. Cynthia Peterson is the one who did the cook-along today, so definitely go check out her Facebook page uh, if you're not friends with her. I think it's a public post, but check it. She did it for the Women's Council of Realtors, which is an awesome organization in this area. I have not had the uh, opportunity to join. It's not just for women. It's just a council that... Uh, supports and promotes them in the workplace, and they are all awesome. And Cynthia did a really, really good job on her first cook-along today, so I highly recommend you go and check her uh, her production out. 
It's a lot shorter than mine. She did about a, I guess it's not that much shorter than mine, about 40 minutes. She did a really, really good job. So go support her because I want her to do more. I think that's amazing. All right, there we go. A little bit more color on those sides. You'll notice the chicken has kind of shrunken in size and that happens pretty much with any meat that you cook. It's always gonna get a little bit smaller. And yes, yesterday was my birthday. I had a lot of fun at the food bank. And actually, I had some really good friends. I don't know if you guys know that much about what I do when I, you know, during the week when I'm having fun, but we have trivia nights usually on Wednesdays. And one of my friends from trivia said, hey, let's get together on Zoom. We just wanna have a drink with you. So I jumped onto Zoom and all of them were there and they all had questions written up and ready to go for like a trivia night, impromptu trivia night, all about stuff that I knew a lot about, like basically trivia about the stuff I was interested in. And so of course I won, but I, they kind of stacked it in my favor. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Each one of them picked three questions and then they all asked their three questions. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time and I thank them for doing that. That, that was amazing. These guys are pretty much done. I'm gonna grab another plate so that I can pull them off real quick and let them rest. While I get the rest of the chicken going and then we're gonna start cooking all of the rest of the veggies and things. So see, you guys want a lot of color on these chicken pieces. You definitely wanna get some browning on there. And you're gonna notice that there's fond left in the pan. The fond is the little bits. You can see all the little chicken bits in here. You want that. That stuff is gold. And that is why I don't cook my chicken beforehand when I'm doing like a chicken cacciatore. Because you're not going to get that color in the pan if you do it that way. All right, we're going to do our wings. One on each side of the pan. And the drumsticks. We've already got most of our color and flavor in the pot, in the pat, uh, in the pat, in the pot, in the pan, in whatever you want to call this thing. Uh, right now I've got those guys going just to kind of get brown, get started cooking. So when we put them in the sauce, they finish cooking. Yeah, the Zoom trivia was a lot of fun. I had a great time with that. That was a, an amazing uh, way to put that together and they did a fantastic job. It was so much fun. So we're gonna get started with uh, the base for the chicken sauce, the cacciatore sauce. Chicken cacciatore, from what I've read on the internet, is supposed to be hunter-style chicken. And I guess when hunters went out and hunted chickens, um, they would kill them and then just throw them into a pot at their hunting ground or their campground and throw in whatever veg they had in the area and cook it with that. So that's really all chicken cacciatore is supposed to be, just kind of like a really easy, quick, thrown together chicken. Um, I think that it's kind of lost that a bit over the years. And now it becomes kind of more of a production. You can do it however you want. I have olives that I'm going to throw in. I have mushrooms I'm going to throw in, bell peppers. If you don't like any of those things, just leave them out. It really doesn't matter. There are recipes everywhere that have all kinds of different styles. Oops. All right, cool. So I got this piece cut off so I have a flat surface. Now I'm basically just going to cut this guy into little strips. And by little strips, I mean long strips. And the reason that I cut off the bottom to make it flat is so that this thing isn't rolling around while I'm trying to do this. And so now I've got these guys that I can lay flat. I can lay this guy flat on the other side so I have more surface to cut on. Cut through him. Sacrificial munchie. I'm just going to cut vertically through these guys like this. Oops. And then we'll just go zoop, 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 zoop. Always curl your fingers in so you don't cut yourself. If your fingers are curled, it's very, very hard for your knife to get into your actual finger. And I'm just doing a really rough chop. If I really wanted to get these guys down fine, I could focus and take my time, but for this, it's not super important. There we go, nice pile of carrots. 
<clears throat> I think that's about all I actually want. These guys I'm just going to set to the side. We'll flip these guys over. Flip! Get a little bit of color on the other side, and then we'll take these guys off and start putting our sauce together. While we're doing that, we're going to grab our celery. Celery is actually really easy. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it down the middle, like this. And then that's all I'm going to do. And then chop this down. Again, curling my fingers inward. And make sure your thumb is behind the rest of your fingers, holding it together. That way you don't take off a corner of your thumb. There we go. So the best part about having extra pieces is that you get to eat them while you're cooking. My favorite part of cooking is the fact that I get to eat everything while I'm making it, and then I get an amazing meal at the end. So it's win-win. It's win you can't you You know what? All those people who say we don't like cooking, it sucks to be you, because you're not getting all of this. All right, I'm going to pull all these out. These are not cooked all the way, by the way. They're not supposed to be. They're going to braise in the sauce once we're done with the sauce. So in case you're looking at your chicken and you're going, my chicken's raw. Yes, Ramsey would scream at you if you served it the way that it is. But the way that we're going to finish it, he's not going to scream at you. He's going to love it. All right. Turn our pan down to medium high. Another bite of carrot. And we're going to get our onion cut. Again, cut it flat. I'm actually going to turn this down quite a bit because the cast iron is going to heat up hot, uh, hotter than what I want it. And it's going to retain that heat. I'm going to take half of the onion here. I'm just going to make some vertical cuts in this. All the way down one side, all the way down the other side. And then I'm just going to chop it down like that, chop it down like that, continue like this. And you'll notice that all of my piles here are about the same size. I'm actually going to have about double the onions because I am going to cut the other half of that onion. And the onions break down really quickly and become almost nothing, but they impart all of their flavor into the pan. Look at that, nothing left over. Little itty bitty heel of the onion, root, whatever. Same thing with this guy. Just cut him down that way. Cut him down this way. And choppity chop all the way home. There we go. And use as much of it as we can. Perfect. Um, it's alright if I get a little bit of celery in there, but I want to focus mostly on the onions because I want those to kind of what they call sweat. They release all their water and they start caramelizing, but I don't want this too hot. I want to put that on maybe medium, a little bit hotter than medium, not quite medium high. We're just going to go in the pan. You want to hear it sizzling. And this is where all of the amazing smell starts coming out. The onions mixing with the chicken. As the onions release the, the liquid that's in the onion, it's actually acidic. So what it's, gonna ha what it's gonna start doing is starting to break up those chicken bits that are stuck to the pan. And then when we add a little bit of white wine, the acid in that, plus the fact that it's cold, it causes the chicken bits to shrink really momentarily and release from the bottom and then dissolve into all of that yumminess. Oh, I love cooking, it's so much fun. There we go. See how the onions are, are just kind of pulling up the chicken bits and getting a little bit brown? And now it smells like chicken and onions and mmm, 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 mmm. So yummy.
I'm actually going to put that on medium high now because the onions in the pan have brought down the temperature of the pan. And we want it to keep sizzling um, enthusiastically, I think, is the term that they use. All right. Turn that up a little bit higher. Get that going. We're going to add a little bit of salt as well. And that'll kind of help the onions release some of their fluid. And pepper, because we love flavor. There we go. All right, let me catch up on some of this chat that I've been missing. Ooh, yeah, what's on Netflix, Felicia? Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, I think, just uh, got added to it today. So if you haven't seen that, I highly, highly recommend that show. It's an animated series that gets really, really good. A lot of adult themes in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can cut the chicken breast in half if you want. Before I put it back in the pan, I'll probably end up, like, chopping it up a little bit. <clears throat> Cindy, you should be browning both sides. Both sides of the chicken. Yes, Felicia. Same. I'm going to be watching through it this weekend. <laughs> Athena, yes. I can definitely, uh, definitely put together some dinner parties. This is gone. And you don't want the onions to burn, but getting them nice and brown is great. That's what you want. And at this point, I'm going to add my carrots and celery to this as well. There are a lot of recipes that don't use carrots and celery in the chicken cacciatore sauce, in the cacciatore sauce. I figure onions, carrots, and celery are kind of considered the holy trinity of cooking. So I'm just going to add them all, and we'll see how it tastes. And I may need a bigger pan. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So I'm going to get these guys nicely incorporated. You're going to notice that the carrots are going to get bright orange, the celery is going to get bright orange, and you're going to hear a lot more sizzling now. And you'll also notice, remember I started with double the onions uh, than I did carrots and celery. And now if you look at this mix, it seems like it's about one to one. It seems like it's a very even distribution, and that's because the onions have actually uh, almost gotten half as big as they were before. Pause for a wine break. Mm. Yum, yum. All right, as this is kind of going and sweating and getting nice and yummy, I'm going to turn it down to medium heat. And I've got some garlic cloves here. Light tap on all of these cloves. Not crushing it, just giving it a nice little love tap. And what that does is makes it super easy for the skin to peel off. And just tossing the skin right away. And oh my god, my kitchen smells amazing. When was the last time you made chicken cacciatore? Have you ever made chicken cacciatore? This is one of those dishes that takes a while to make, yet once you've made it, you, again, like I'm going to be eating this for probably four days. Tonight, tomorrow, Sunday, and then if there's any left over on Monday, I'll probably have some of that for lunch. And maybe along with something else, like another side, maybe a little bit of pasta or something. Take a second to come back over here and mind my veggies. Mm. 
Now what I'm going to do is add about a quarter cup of wine. And of course we've got the refill at the ready. But what that wine is going to do is it's going to pull all of those brown bits off of the bottom of the pan. And now as we stir it together, we're just incorporating all of that chicken flavor into the vegetables. Now I really kind of want that wine to burn off. It'll kind of get absorbed by the, the veggies. And while I'm waiting for that to happen, I'm just going to kind of roughly chop my garlic. Again, my hands are curled. My fingers are curled in on themselves. So I'm at a much lower chance of cutting myself. I don't think I've cut myself in a very long time. I burn myself all the time. Um, probably because I'm stupid. But I haven't cut myself in a very, very long time. There we go. Get these guys kind of horizontal. And then just a nice rough chop here. Awesome. Oops, not quite what I wanted to do. Get this churning. Now see, here is a classic example of where I made a small little mistake in what I was doing. I actually wanted to add the garlic before I put the wine in. So what I'm going to do is let that just kind of bubble off a little bit. Scrape it away from the center of the pan so that I have a nice flat surface here. And then just garlic on there to toast up a little bit. Again, a lot of people think that cooking is, has to be perfect. It doesn't. You can make mistakes. You can come back. If you watch the chicken parmesan episode, I think I asked you in the next in the next episode or in the comments if you guys noticed what I did wrong. I forgot to sear the chicken before I put it in the oven. So the chicken was just, I mean, it was baked, tasted great, but it didn't have that crust on the outside. Oops. <laughs> it happens. You just got to, like, roll with it. And I realized that as soon as I pulled it out of the oven, I was just like, well, it's got great, great yummy cheese. The bottom looks disgusting because there's no there's no sear on it. So, yeah, you know, live and learn. And then get loves. A little bit of salt on that garlic. We've already peppered this up, so we're good. Now we'll incorporate the garlic with everything else in the pan. Now when you toast garlic in a pan like this, what happens is it actually starts releasing some of the oil that's inside of the, uh, I don't know if it's a fruit, whatever it is, whatever the, the cellular structure breaks down and um, the garlicky flavor gets released. So by uh, searing it just a little bit before you incorporate it into any, everything, you get a little bit more of a garlic flavor throughout. Cool, so we got that going. Our chicken is over here resting. What else do I want? Mushrooms. So I am adding mushrooms to my chicken cacciatore. You don't have to. If you don't like mushrooms, omit them. I'm going to make these like, I don't know, quarter inch slices. And when I prep my mushrooms, I just brush the dirt off and then I pop off the stems just because it's easier to lay them flat on the cutting board to cut through. Totally up to you if you want to make it more rustic and keep the stems on. That's just what I like to do. Mushrooms are also a vegetable or fungus or whatever that um, shrinks in size as you cook it. It releases all of its moisture and it starts kind of getting smaller and smaller in size. And I probably should have my bigger pan out here. We're going to see how far we can go. Take this recipe up to 11 before we finally give in and say that we made a mistake. Cool. Those guys are done. You'll notice that all of the vegetables are getting smaller in size as they release water and cook down. And that's why they call it cooking down. Because you're cooking it and it's going down in height. Mushrooms. Into the pan.
All right, I give up. I used a small, too small of a pan. I'll grab the big one. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this over here on one of my burners behind. And just keep it going at medium heat. Wipe this out a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to put this on max sear to warm it up real hot, real quick. And I am going to add a little bit of oil to this pan. Choop. You basically just want enough oil to kind of coat the bottom. And have a little bit like a tablespoon down at the very bottom in like a little reservoir. That's what you want. Good to go. I'm going to let this heat up a little bit before I toss that in. While I'm waiting on this to heat up, I'm going to tear down my pepper. Peppers are one of those things that people get really uh, intimidated by because they're round. They're cylindrical. They're really, really easy to take apart. Let me show you how. I'm basically just gonna take my knife. I'm gonna cut off the top, like so, straight down. And I'm gonna cut off the bottom. Eh, I'm not gonna cut off the bottom. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a slit from the middle of the bottom, straight down. I take my knife. Let me switch to this view. Cool. I'm going to take my knife and I am going to keep it flat on the cutting board and just cut straight across while I roll the pepper around like so. Pepper's done. Anything on the bottom, I can just cut it off. All the seeds, all done. Good to go. This I can cut in half, and now I can make nice strips with that. If I want, I can actually cut around the stem here. Cool. Pepper's done, and I see my pan is smoking over there, which is great, so I can go and get my other pan and dump the contents in. And with the pepper, all I really want are long strips and chunks. These were not dicing. Some people put red and green, some people put red, yellow, orange, some people put all kinds of different colored peppers in here. I'm going to be using a red bell pepper and then I got a poblano pepper just for a little bit of added flavor because too much bell pepper for me is just... Mm. I like a good bell pepper but I want some other flavors. Cool. Turn off that burner, bring this all back over here. And there we go. Woo, this smells really good. And that is an adequately sized pan. All right, this one I'm just gonna set over here. The only downside is now I have to clean two pans instead of the one. Man, awesome, you're going. These guys are good. Let me chop up the poblano. Same thing. If you just cut off the top, put that aside. I can just slice right down the middle, like so. And then if I just kind of lay my knife flat, this one actually just kind of came apart for me, so I don't even really have to worry about it. And then same thing with this. I'm just going to kind of cut diagonal slices like this. And our peppers are ready to go in. We're gonna add these in a bit. We're not gonna do that right now. Just getting them ready. And the last thing I'm gonna get ready before I pour it in, and turn this down to medium high, not sear anymore, because I don't want to sear anything. There we go. We can see the mushrooms are kind of getting smaller. They're releasing a lot of their moisture as well. 
the veggies are releasing their moisture. And by taking a break and cutting something and then coming back to this and then taking a break and cutting something and coming back to this, nothing in the pan gets hot enough to burn. Everything is going to continue to cook and kind of get, you know, broken down and, and concentrated in flavor. But if you have the temperature just around medium, medium high, and you just make sure that you come over and move things around once in a while, uh, you're very unlikely to burn stuff. There we go. We've got our peppers going. So I've got a bowl of San Marzano tomatoes here, and these are just peeled tomatoes. I got a can of San Marzano tomatoes. And the reason that I'm using these is they're what you use if you're going to make a pasta sauce. You want a really good pasta sauce? Any kind of San Marzano that is uh, peeled. And the reason you get the peeled ones is because they still have all of the tomato juices and the tomato seeds and everything inside of them. And we're going to get dirty. And we're just going to kind of squish these guys down. And essentially what we're doing is making kind of like a very rustic tomato sauce here. And this is kind of therapeutic. It's like when you're uh, making fists with your toes on the carpet. Except you're making tomato sauce with your fingers in the bowl. Very cool. Ooh, yeah, yellow peppers are awesome. Hey, Steven, how's it going, man? Oh, yes, mushrooms are amazing. Cheese is great, Hobbit. Yep, you can throw the chicken sink in. I've also got olives. I think I told you guys that at the beginning. Now what I'm going to do is go wash my hands real quick. This is soupy. It still has chunks of tomatoes. The tomato chunks are actually going to kind of start liquefying once they hit the hot pan. So let me see if I can do this without dripping all over the... Yikes! Kitchen floor. We made it. No drips. Now for that, I don't use soap. Uh, it was just tomato sauce, tomato juice. Uh, I just kind of rinse my hands off, wipe them down on the towel. Now I'm going to turn up the heat because this is cold and I need to get it up to temperature, but I'm not going to turn it up super high. I just want it on like medium high, a little bit on the higher end of that. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. These go right into the pan. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this and kind of like do this to get all the, the rest and then pour that in here as well. I just have my faucet on very low, and I'm just kind of rinsing down the sides here. Guess I could have switched to that camera before I went over there. But see, not too much more water. Another maybe cup. There we go. If you have chicken stock, you can always use that. I don't happen to have chicken stock, so... I am not. We're going to get all this stirred together, and all of that lovely flavor is going to get imparted into tomato sauce and that looks delicious now we just added a ton of tomatoes so what I'm going to do I'm actually going to turn this up to the highest it'll go just to get the simmering again and then I want to taste it for seasoning I have a feeling I'm going to have to add a bit more salt because this is a lot of tomatoes. Um, and the tomato's acidity takes the salt, the saltiness right out of it, the seasoning right out of it. So I'm going to turn that down to medium high, let that kind of simmer a bit. Grab a spoon and taste. Yeah, not too bad. He says as he adds a metric ton of salt to his tomato sauce. Cacciatore sauce. Get that all stirred in. You don't want to oversalt this. You want to salt this just until you can kind of start to taste the seasoning. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to put our chicken back into the sauce and we're going to let it braise in the sauce. As the sauce cooks down, it's going to be evaporating a lot of the water out of it. That's what all, what all this steam is. So it's going to concentrate the salty flavor. 
So you just want to salt it till you're just kind of starting to taste the seasoning. And then as it reduces, that flavor is going to get more and more concentrated and pronounced. Right there. So, first thing I'm going to do is add my chicken back in here. We've got all these lovely browned chicken bits. And I'm going to add them in whole because I want them to finish cooking as whole pieces. And then after the fact, you can cut them down if you'd like. Actually, I will cut those chicken breasts down because they are gigantic. My mother has a point. We're going to get these guys covered with the sauce. Another thigh will fit over there. I'll just go ahead and cut right down the middle here. On the plate, I have no shame. Can you imagine if I had kept that other pan and tried to fit all of this in there? I don't think it would have worked. Like I said, sometimes you just got to admit your mistakes and move on. And there we go. <clears throat> so we're just going to leave this in the pan for, I don't know, a bit, probably 20 minutes or so. Our cacciatore is essentially more or less mostly done. We're going to take our peppers and put them right along the top. The heat from the sauce and the chicken and all of that steam that's going on is going to cook them through and not make them fall apart. We're good on that. Any juices that you have on your plate, make sure you pour them in as well. That's just flavor. And we're done with that. Now, what I want to do is I have some basil that I'm going to add. And again, like we did last time, but several times, we're just going to roll that into like a cigar shape and just cut through it. This is the best way to julienne basil. I'm going to sprinkle that kind of over the top here. Not so much over the tomatoes, but definitely getting it into the broth so that the broth starts cooking it. And again, I made a small mistake. I should have added these before I added the chicken and the uh, bell peppers. Because then it would have been more incorporated, but this will work just fine. And I'm going to run outside real quick. I'll actually bring you with me. We're going to run outside really quick, and we're going to go grab some rosemary. Let's grab a... Trusty pair of kitchen shears, and let's see if the wireless connection works well, or if it starts failing us. So, garden. How pretty. Pretty garden. I'll give you guys a better tour later. Right now I'm in rosemary harvesting mode. <laughs> Grab those. Come here. And that one. Shoop, shoop, shoop. Yikes. There we are. Rosemary from the garden. Just gonna stick a sprig of this at all four corners. 
and let that all kind of meld together. I'm going to turn this down to medium, and I want it simmering. I don't want it boiling. At this point, you can also add um, dried oregano, which is probably something that I'll do, and also um, red pepper flakes if you want a little bit of spice, which I'll probably do as well. Yummity, yum, yum, yummity, yum, yum. Hmm. I won't be adding red pepper flakes because I don't have any red pepper flakes, but I am going to add dried oregano. I could have sworn I had a giant thing of red pepper flakes in there. Again, since this is going to be kind of simmering over here for a while, I don't really care if it's in because it's going to be absorbed by the uh, sauce anyway. Yet you could have added this earlier before you put all the rest of the stuff in. And a little bit of cayenne pepper since I don't have any flakes. Awesome. As this simmers, as it kind of starts breaking down and getting a little bit soft, I'm just kind of like push things down, get them into the broth. The peppers are already getting soft, so I know that they're going to be nice and cooked. Everything will just kind of fill in. Man, even this pan might be a little bit too small. <laughs> Gotta use the Dutch oven! It's all good. Alright, we'll let this kind of sit here and simmer for a little bit. Let all the flavors kind of meld. Let some of the moisture evaporate. While we're waiting on this, I'm going to go ahead and actually cook some green beans. So, let's use our multi-tool camera over here that we've got. Check this out. Can you, let's see, will you fit there? How does that look? That looks pretty good. Get the lights on over here. Burner up. I'm just going to go ahead and reuse this pan. I'm going to clean it anyway, might as well. As that heats up, I'm going to come back over to my cutting board. And I'm just going to cut one clove of garlic down. Peel off the skin again. I'm not looking for, and I've got a little bit of a blemish on this side. I'm just going to kind of cut it out. I'm not going for super fine here. I just really want to get the garlic kind of chopped down. Now what you could do is just smash it down flat like that. And then all your pieces are going to be very small. And it's going to break down really quickly in that pan. Now, I've got some French beans over here. And you could definitely blanch these before you cook them. I personally like them to be a little bit uh, crispy, like on the, on the inside. I like them to have bite. I like them to be uh, more al dente than, than soft. I think that soft beans just, they don't really do it for me. Now, if you're making like a bean stew, different story. But if you're just doing like grilled beans or, or pan seared beans, I don't like those to be soft. I think that they get, they lose some of their character, I guess. So I'm going to take the garlic here. We're going to go over to our pan over here. It is feeling a little bit warm. We'll get our garlic in and then we'll come back with some oil. Do, 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 do. Trying to heat up a little bit, add a little bit of oil. There we go. Get the garlic sizzling over here. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to get the garlic kind of... I don't even want to say browned. I just want to get it soft. It's going to start going a little bit translucent. The entire kitchen is going to smell like garlic. And uh, I like to say that if the kitchen smells like garlic, your breath won't smell like garlic because you're releasing all of that aroma into the kitchen. You'll definitely taste it, but it's not going to be like a sharp garlic flavor or sharp garlic smell on somebody's breath when they're done eating it. So the garlic is kind of getting soft. I'm going to turn this down to like medium low. And let that just kind of toast for a bit. 
And while that happens, I'm going to grab a shallot. Come here, shallot. Grab our shallot. Cut the front off. Peel the skin off. And cut the back off. You get the rest of the skin off. With the shallot, all I'm going to do is cut it in half like this. And then just slice with the grain. Get some nice long shallot pieces. And then the same thing with this one. Right along the grain like that. We're going to get these in the pan with the garlic. Oh, come on. Now the pan's getting a little too cool, so we're going to turn up the heat on that bad boy and break up our shallots. Awesome. Shallots are softening a little bit. This is still bubbling away. Now we're just going to take our beans, toss them in. Give that a bit of a uh, flip just to kind of get everything covered in oil. And of course, no good dish goes without some seasoning. Salt. Got some pepper in here as well. There we go. I'm going to show you a real quick trick to get these guys cooked up in a hurry. But I'm going to let them sear for just a little bit longer before we do it. So I've got this pan here on medium. And I'm trying to get everything into a single layer. You guys want to know the secret? I'll tell you the secret. Secret's about a quarter cup of water. And when we're happy with the color on these guys, we're going to pour it in and put a lid on it, and it'll flash steam them in the pan. Pretty cool little technique. And to turn the camera off, give me a second. The fun of using a phone. There we are. Getting some color on these beans, getting some color on the shallots and the garlic. One nice layer here. Got our water at the ready. Where is my lid? Here's a lid that'll work. Yep, perfect. Set that over there, turn the heat up to high. Now I want this to get super hot so that when I add the water, it just turns straight into steam. Put the lid on, shh, steamed, we're good. Coming back over to our chicken cacciatore. Still bubbling away, looking great. Peppers are getting soft, they're cooking through. Chicken is cooking through as well. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a taste now. Temperature on this might be a little bit high. I want this down to like a simmer. But there we go. Oh yeah. Oh ho ho yeah. That is damn good sauce. And it is spicy. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Alright, cool. Let's do our beans. We've got our nice pan here. Let's check and see if these guys are nice and seared. They are definitely getting color on their other side. 
pan is feeling nice and hot. And here we go. We're gonna let that uh, kind of bubble away until all the water's evaporated, basically. And so that's a real quick way to steam beans. Hey, Annika, how's it going? Thank you, Laura. Ha, Julie. Yes, that did not go, uh, that did not go. Not, no, nowhere near my hair. My hair is, I'm just going to become shaggy. It's going to be awesome. Dean, I, you can put sugar in. I actually like it to be a little bit tartar. Tartar? Tartar sauce? No, I like it to be a little bit more tart. Um, a little bit more acidic. That's just how I like my chicken cacciatore. If you want to add sugar to yours, you're definitely more than welcome to. Again, uh, like at the beginning of this, I like to say that cooking is not a science, it's more of an art. Um, you just gotta do what you wanna do. If you don't like mushrooms, you don't like olives, um, don't put them in. But I love Kalamata olives. And I've already got the mushrooms in, but now I'm gonna put the Kalamata olives in. And now I'm hearing my beans start to kind of pop, which means that the water's gone. Let's head back over here. Ooh, yeah. And the last bit, which I forgot to put in at the beginning, is the pancetta. Once again, tonight is a comedy of errors. This is where you see that things do go wrong quite a bit when you're cooking. I'm just going to kind of poke these down. Yes, I'm using a carrot. Don't judge me. Why am I using a carrot, you might ask? The official answer is because I left my uh, spatula over on the, on the burner. The unofficial answer is I get to taste my sauce some more. Mmm, nom, 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 nom. Cool. Beans are cooked. Garlic is nice and brown, but not burned. These are still going to have a nice al dente crispiness to them, which is exactly what I want. Turn this down to low, like very low, and just let them stay warm in there. There we go. I'm going to come over here. Reuse my lid, and it doesn't fit. Ha! Love it. All right, I'm not going to reuse my lid. You know what I'm going to reuse? I'm done playing games, chicken. This is war. There we go. And shoop, 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 shoop. So that some of the steam comes out. And the induction thing turned itself off because it's been cooking for too long. So I'll just turn it back on. We're good. This will keep simmering. We're all good. So now I'm really just giving this another like 10 minutes. The beans are pretty much done. So I could probably actually plate the beans up right now. Hmm. Should we do fancy plating or should we do like normal rustic plating? We'll do rustic plating. This is a rustic dish. So the chicken cacciatore is definitely something that there's going to be leftovers for. I'm not going to make leftovers of the beans. The beans would be too, like a two, two person serving. If we come over here and take a look, like this is enough for probably two people. So I would always cook the beans fresh. The reason being in the, in the fridge, they're going to kind of start breaking down even more. They're really not going to be all that palatable the next day. Again, totally up to you. If you like day old beans, that's totally something that you're allowed to do. Nobody's telling you can't. Just my preference. That the beans don't take very much time. I would just cook them fresh each time. And there we go. 
I'll keep these. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to start digging into this and probably grab a smaller piece of chicken. Let the rest of it kind of keep cooking. But, oh my god, that looks good. Um, I'll set you there for now. Let me see if I can find one of those drumsticks. Pull you out. Set you there. Actually, I think I'll do a breast instead. That looks good. Put the drumstick back in. Now, slotted spoon, I want to grab all these goodies and put them over the chicken. Grab a few pieces of pepper. Grab a bunch of olives. Layer this up. Turn down the heat on this guy because he is rolling and that's not what I want. But see, so what we get is we get nicely cooked peppers that actually hold their shape. They're not falling apart. We get some good mushrooms. We get some great cacciatore sauce. <laughs> and you get some yummy beans along with it. Definitely not the prettiest plating. But it's not really supposed to be. It's supposed to be a really rustic dish. It's supposed to be something that you just kind of throw together in a pan. Cook, and you get all this wonderful flavor, and you get a ton of delicious leftovers. I think the only thing that could make this better would be like a pot of rice, and then just put a pile of rice over on this side or something like that. Unfortunately, I did not think about that tonight. However... I am going to dig into this and give you all food envy. Pork and a knife. I'm going to turn this down to medium low and recover it. And let it just kind of keep simmering along over here. And here we go. Again, maybe not the prettiest dish I've ever plated. I'll make a better one for the gram a little bit later. But everything kind of goes together. The vegetables are very soft and cooked through. And the chicken is cooked. Just cut through this bad boy. Yep, cooked through chicken. Mm-hmm. That is delicious. <clears throat> that is a wonderful chicken catch toy. Mmm. A couple of small mistakes along the way. You just gotta roll with it. Just what you gotta do. It's not something that I make very often, so it's not something that I have a lot of experience with, but hey, you know what? Just can't get intimidated. Just got to keep going. Oops, made a mistake. Whatever. Keep moving forward. All right, everybody. Another wonderful cook along live in the books. Green beans are also perfect. Mmm. Al dente and delicious. Not soggy, not flaccid, just soft enough. Mmm. Could use maybe a little bit more salt. Otherwise, spot on. Yum. I might actually make myself a pot of rice after I turn this off. And then when I plate it, that's what you're going to see. The pot of rice, the chicken cacciatore, the green beans. It's going to look really good. It tastes phenomenal, so... 
Um, hopefully you guys give this a try if you're not cooking along live with me tonight. I know I didn't post any of the ingredients this week. I'm sorry. 100% my fault. Um, and yet, I will post them with the replay. So if you guys are inspired to put something together like this, please do. Enough food for an army if you use one chicken. Or if you're a single person or just a couple, enough food for at least a couple of dinners. So excellent, excellent use of... Uh, Excellent economical dinner for a couple of nights at home. So shelter in place, this is an excellent shelter in place uh, meal to make. As always, have an excellent weekend. Thank you, Dean. Thank you so much. I know that you're a really good barbecuer, man. You should do one of these. You should do a cook along barbecue night. Um, I would definitely be into watching that. That would be a lot. Of, well, I guess barbecue is a lot of just kind of setting it and leaving it. So. Come up with some interesting sides, man. It'd be a lot of fun to cook with you. We might even be able to do like a Zoom thing. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, Mom, you can definitely freeze a serving or two. Eat what you're going to eat tonight. Pop the rest of it after it cools down into a Ziploc bag. Uh, get all the air out. Toss it in the freezer. When you're ready for it, um, you can actually just heat like a pot of water and then submerge the bag. You're almost like sous vide reheating it. And it's a great way to reheat that. Yeah. Also, you can definitely throw the uh, throw the cacciatore or throw the beans into the cacciatore. That's a great way to use up the beans if you want uh, to get rid of the leftovers. Ooh, I like tabbouleh. I'm assuming Dad did that, Cindy. And yeah, rice goes along with this really well. You can actually kind of sop up all of the sauce with the rice. Usually, I would make it, but it, I just didn't think about. I thought about it, and I was just like, "That's not going to be very interesting to watch on the stream." A pot of rice boiling. So, I just didn't even think about putting it together. And yes, happy Friday, Jesse. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys all had fun. This is always a blast for me to put together and uh, do for you all. And give it a try. Chicken cacciatore is not that difficult. It, it takes a lot of time, but the effort level is really low. You're really just throwing everything into a pan, letting it kind of simmer and come together. Um, you saw that I made several mistakes tonight. It still tastes phenomenal. It's really not a big deal. Um, give it a try. Yeah, have a party. Have a party when we can unshelter in place. Anyway, I will see you guys next week. I will get the recipe for next week's cook along on Facebook on Monday. Um, I will hold myself to that. And if you guys don't see anything on Facebook on Monday, pester the hell out of me and ask me what I'm cooking so that I remember that I need to post something on Facebook on Monday. <laughs> but hopefully I get it on Facebook before you guys start pestering me. Anyway, everybody, have an excellent Friday night. Looking forward to next week. I hope you guys are all healthy, happy, sheltering at home, and safe, and continue to be so. Take all the precautions you need to, and I will see you next week. Have a great one, guys. Bye.